Hello everybody, today's topic is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. So, first let's define what partial pressure is. Partial pressure is the pressure exerted by one gas in a mixture if it occupied the same volume on its own. So the sum of all the partial pressures, so the sum of all the pressures from the individual gases in the mixture, is equal to the total pressure of that mixture, or the total pressure of that container that contains multiple gases. And the equation we use to represent this is P total, so the total pressure is equal to pressure of gas 1 plus pressure of gas 2 plus pressure of gas 3 and so on and so forth. So the sum of each individual pressure or partial pressure is equal to the total pressure of the system. Here we have a diagram showing what I'm talking about. So we have gas A, these nice blue dots, and that has a pressure that we'll identify with A. We have gas B, these green gas molecules, we identify that pressure with PB. We have gas C, so a third different gas, with these lavender particles, and that has a pressure of PC. So if we take all three of these gases and combine them into one container to make a mixture of gas A, gas B, and gas C all in the same container, the respective pressures, so PA, PB, and PC, will add up to be the total pressure of this new container. So here's an example. We have a balloon, and it's filled with nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, and carbon dioxide. It has an interior pressure of 1,200 torr. If the partial pressures of N2 is 900 torr and O2 is 100 torr, what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide? So we would use our equation we just went over. We have our total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of oxygen plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So this question is asking us for the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And it gives us the partial pressure of nitrogen and of oxygen. So our partial pressure of nitrogen is 900 torr. Our partial pressure of oxygen is 100 torr. So we can plug these into our equation, 900 torr and 100 torr. Our partial pressure of carbon dioxide is again what we're trying to find, that's our unknown. So we can represent that with an X. And we know that the total pressure of our system is 1200 torr, it tells us right here. So if we're to solve for X, we would just subtract 900, subtract 100 from both sides. We end up with partial pressure of carbon dioxide equaling 200 torr. So one of the nice things about this equation is as we learned yesterday, we have many different units for pressure. As so long as our units are consistent, right? So we have tor, tor, and tor. We can use this equation with any different pressure unit. It's the, what's important is that it's the same unit throughout. So if we had 100 tor for oxygen and we had something in ATM for nitrogen, we'd have to convert to one or the other so that we had all tor or all ATM. So we can also use this concept of partial pressures with moles. So one mole of any gas takes up the same volume and exerts the same amount of pressure. So one mole of helium, one mole of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, they all take up the same amount of space and they all exert the same amount of pressure, regardless of what the gas is. So because of this relationship, the partial pressures of gases is directly proportional to the mole ratio of the gas. And so we can turn this into equation. We have P of X, so this is our unknown gas. We can, if we're solving for any certain gas, we'll just plug that in for X here. So pressure of a certain gas 
is equal to n, remember n is our variable for moles, so the moles of that gas divided by the total number of moles. So we're taking the moles of the gas that we're looking for and dividing it by the total number of moles of gas in the system, and then multiplying that fraction by the total pressure of the system. And again, x is the gas that we're trying to find that we're working with. So here's an example. We have a container that contains four moles of nitrogen gas and one mole of carbon monoxide. If the total pressure is 10 atm, what is the partial pressure of carbon monoxide? So we use the equation that we just learned on the previous slide. We have P of X. In this case, we're working with partial pressure of carbon monoxide, right? So our X is going to be the pressure of carbon monoxide right here, the moles of carbon monoxide over the moles total times the pressure total. So we, again, we have pressure carbon, this should be carbon dioxide, equals the moles of carbon monoxide over the moles total times the pressure total. So this is what we're trying to find equals one mole of carbon monoxide because we have one mole of carbon monoxide here divided by five moles total. So we get that from the four moles of nitrogen and the one mole of carbon monoxide. Four plus one is equal to five. That's where we get the five moles total times the total pressure, which they tell us right here is 10 atm. So if we solve, we have 1 over 5 times 10, which is equal to 2. So the partial pressure of carbon monoxide is 2 atm. One more example. What's the total pressure of a container that holds five moles of carbon dioxide, three moles of nitrogen, and one mole of hydrogen if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.580 atm? So, again, we'd use the same equation. We're looking for the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. We want the total pressure of the container, just kidding. We want the total pressure of a container, and we know that it holds five moles of carbon dioxide, three moles of nitrogen, and one mole of hydrogen. So we use the same equation we were working with. We have 0 0.580 atm of carbon dioxide equals five moles of carbon dioxide divided by the total moles in the system. So again, we have the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. They give it to us here. We have the number of moles of carbon dioxide that make up that partial pressure. They give it to us here. So since we have the relationship of the partial pressure of one gas and the moles of one gas, and we have the total number of moles, nine moles, right? So we have five carbon dioxide. We have one hydrogen, and we have three nitrogen, that gives us a total of nine moles of gas. That's where we get this number from. And we're solving for the total pressure of our system. So if we rearrange it, we have P total equals 0.580 times 9 divided by 5, and that equals 1.04 atm. So this is the total pressure of the container that has 5 moles of carbon dioxide, 3 moles of nitrogen, and 1 mole of hydrogen gas. So we learned two new equations today. We learned P total is equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3, 
And again, this can go on as long as you want to. It's not limited to three gases. And we also learned the partial pressure of one gas is equal to the mole ratio of that gas to the total moles times the total pressure. So hopefully this helps you with your homework. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.